action, this time everyone knows it's particularly serious. And it is. It is bad. It is beyond bad. If even half of it is true, then he's toast. For more than a year, prosecutors have been collecting evidence about whether Trump knowingly retained classified documents at his Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida. He carefully does he sue me. What's he gonna fucking sue me for? Copyright infringement? Because I'm trying to look hot like he is and be center left. Left office. Investigators looked at whether he took steps to conceal the materials after the Justice Department issued a subpoena for their return. And this included investigating whether Trump instructed others to conceal the materials and whether he revealed their oh, contents fuck. to other people. No! And now we know the answer. The answer is yes, he did. The most serious charge oh. against Trump is that he retained national defense oh, information. I'm illegal, illegal. He came for me. Espionage Act. And now we have the actual uh -oh. indictment itself. I remind you that these are unproven allegations and the government will have to prove them beyond a reasonable doubt for a conviction. But the DOJ says that they have a mountain of corroborating evidence, including tapes, emails, texts, and witnesses. And the amount of verbatim transcripts in this indictment makes it seem like the DOJ has numerous inculpatory records of Trump and his staff. So Trump's defense lawyers, whoever they are at the time of this video, should be quaking in their boots. Now the indictment lays out in lurid detail how Trump and his valet, Waltine Nauda, conspired to conceal government documents. The facts of the indictment start on January 21st, 2021, with Trump getting ready to leave office. Trump caused his boxes containing hundreds of classified documents to be transported from the White House to the Mar-a-Lago Club. From January through March 15th, 2021, some of Trump's boxes were stored in the Mar-a-Lago Club's white and gold ballroom. Trump's boxes were for a time stacked on the ballroom stage. Now, as an attorney with years of experience, I probably need to break this down for you lay people. Now, generally speaking, a stage is used for the, I don't know, public display of something. And being on a stage in a ballroom is usually antithetical to the secure protection of top secret documents. So in March, 2021, those boxes were moved to the business center at Mar-a-Lago. This location also proved to be a problem as Trump employee number one asked Trump employee number two if they could move the boxes out of the business center to make room for staff to use it as an office. Employee number two initially balked at the suggestion. Whoa, okay, so POTUS specifically asked Nauda for those boxes to be in the business center because they are his papers. But later employee two suggested moving the papers to the lake room, to which employee one responded, there is still a little room in the shower where his other stuff is. Is it only his papers he cares about? There's some other stuff in there that are not his papers. Could that go to storage? Or does he want everything in there on property? This was a good idea to employee number two. Yes, anything that's not the beautiful mind paper boxes can definitely go to storage. Want to take a look at the space and start moving tomorrow AM. Yes, believe it or not, his staff actually called them the beautiful mind paper boxes. And so after the text exchange between Trump employee number one and Trump employee number two, in April, 2021, some of Trump's boxes were moved from the business center to a bathroom and shower in the Mar-a-Lago club's lake room. So at this point, the beautiful mind paper boxes had slowly declined in position and repute from the stage of the white and gold ballroom to the modest business center and now sadly relegated to living in the bathroom as Trump would say, like a dog. Yes, our nation's secrets relegated to the ugliest bathroom on the planet. And by now we've been poking fun at this, but oh, no he's ripping. In this bathroom. There are fresh towels and there's an empty. He is ripping hard into this. I know you guys can't see me. I'm still here. Chad, is the audio weird for anyone? Uh, echoing? Wait, is it? I I'm still here. I just like can't fix the camera, unfortunately. I, I might be fucking cooked. I don't know what's going on. I think I like tweaked it a little bit. I don't know. I, I might have tweaked it a little too much. I fucking twerked it. Um, it's literally not working. I don't know what the fuck's happening. Oh, uh, this is devastating. This is devastating. Actually devastating. There is nothing. The camera is just saying no signal, and I don't know what it is. Um... I have been doing that. I've been activating and deactivating. No, the camera says no signal on the monitor. And I don't know what I did. I have plenty of backup cameras, uh, but that would take a while to fucking uh, fire up. Yeah, I'm on my dream arc, okay? It's what the mask is. That's the point of the mask. That's the point of Damascus. So that's, that's what I'm doing. I've decided I'm hiding my face going forward. I want people to see it. Stream is 100% better now. My wife and mom can watch.
Okay, well, that's messed up that you're saying that. Your wife and mom should be able to watch regardless. I promise I will not have sex with them. The waste bin implying that the housekeeping staff continually refreshes this bathroom, uh, and I kind of doubt they have uh, TSSEI clearance. But after a couple of months, Trump apparently decided he needed to use that shower and had the boxes moved to a storage room. And in May 2021, Trump caused some of his boxes to be brought to his summer residence at the Bedminster Club. And then it gets worse. On December 7, 2021, Nauda found several of Trump's boxes fallen and their contents spilled onto the floor of the storage room. Nauda texted Trump employee two, quote, I opened the door and found this. Nauda also attached two photographs he took of the spill. Trump employee number two replied, oh no, oh no, and I'm sorry POTUS had my phone. And Nauda attached a couple of photographs of the spill, one of which is given to us in the indictment with visible classified information redacted. Now, apart from the documents, this is also an interesting detail that POTUS had this employee's phone. Uh, Trump, who famously does not use a cell phone, was using someone else's phone for God only knows what. But this is also peanuts compared to the recorded interview Trump agreed to give in July 2021 with two staffers and the publisher and ghostwriter of Mark Meadows' autobiography at his Bedminster Club in New Jersey. Now, for your entertainment, we've used AI to recreate Trump's voice from the transcript. This is not really Trump's voice, which I assume would have been less comprehensible. Well, with Mark Milley, uh, let me see that. I'll show you an example. He said that I wanted to attack country A. Isn't it amazing? I have a big pile of papers. This thing just came up. Look, this was him. They presented me this. This is off the record, but they presented me this. This was him. This was the Defense Department and him. Wow. We looked at some. This was him. This wasn't done by me. This was him. All sorts of stuff pages long. Look. Hmm. Wait a minute. Let's see here. <laughs> yeah. I just found. Isn't that amazing? This totally wins my case, you know. Mm-hmm. Except... It is like highly confidential. Yeah. <laughs> secret. This is secret information. Look, look at this. You attack and by the way, isn't that incredible? Yeah. I was just thinking because we were talking about it and you know, he said, quote, he wanted to attack country A and what? You did. This was done by the military and given to me. Uh, I think we can probably, right? I don't know. We'll see. We'll have to see. Yeah. We'll have to try to declassify it. Figure out all. Uh, yeah. See, as president, I could have declassified it. Yeah. <laughs> now I can't, you know, but this is still a secret. Yeah, <laughs> now we have a problem. Isn't that interesting? Yes, I would say that's interesting. I would say it's interesting to admit that you know that you could have declassified it before you left office, but didn't, and now you can't. And I'd also say it's interesting that you are intentionally showing these classified materials to someone who is not allowed to see them. That's definitely interesting. And again, broadly speaking, writers and publishers usually don't go hand in hand with the dissemination of TSSCI information. But surely that was the only time that this happened, right? I mean, it's so blatant and stupid. There's no way he did it another time, right? Wrong. Wrong. In August or September 2021, when he was no longer president, Trump met in his office at the Bedminster Club with a representative of his political action committee. During the meeting, Trump commented that an ongoing military operation in Country B was not going well. Trump showed the PAC representative a classified map of Country B and told the PAC representative that he should not be showing the map to the PAC representative and to not get too close. The PAC representative did not have a security clearance or any need to know classified information about the military operation. Just what an incredible tableau. I'm gonna show you highly classified material, but also don't get too close because you're not allowed to actually see it. And on top of it, there is a non-zero- We fucking did it. I am literally the goat. I am literally the fucking goat. I did a face reveal. Never been done before, folks. Face reveal in between. I swapped the camera. I swapped the camera, folks. We're on a new camera. That's right. Never been done before. Bro, just fire March at this point. You don't need him anymore. I mean, dude, I do all my technical shit. What do you mean? I know just as much or rather just as little as March does about this kind of stuff. <laughs> dude, let's be real. Is another mic on or something? You know what? Another mic might be actually on. Good call. There it is. How about now? Is it better now? Is audio better? Um.
Rare audio W chatter. Um, the, the, uh, the, the cam, this camera settings are different than the other one. It's actually for a different lighting structure. This is for my, the overhead camera on, uh, the podcast. So it's going to look a little different for the record. This is the first time an audio pedophile has been helpful. You have been relegated from an audio pedophile to an audio pervert instead. Your classification has changed. Reminder that you called Trump outing himself. Yeah. That box and that person didn't know anything about that. That's not a conspiracy. That's a crime by Donald Trump, not the guy moving the box. If they both knew and had a meeting of the minds, this is illegal and we're doing it. That is a conspiracy. And I also want to underscore the fact that this dude, if they're saying this in the investigation, I 100% believe that Trump had a conversation. Oh my God. I'm so excited. Oh my God. Trump is such a fucking dumbass, dude. Oh my God, 100p, dude. He 100% would have been like, yeah, this is very illegal, folks. Very illegal. You better hide it good. In 2020, he's in pretty much verbatim. It came out shortly after that, that that is exactly what Donald Trump said. God, so brilliant. I love him so much. No chance that one of the people shown this information was Kid Rock. Yeah, that Kid Rock. Now, in May of 20. Kid Diddler Rock. That's his full name. Say his full name. 2021, Nara realized that Trump had some documents that belonged to Nara and began demanding their return. So after half a year of repeated demands, on January 17, 2022, Trump employee two and Nauda gathered 15 boxes from Trump's residence, loaded the boxes in Nauda's car, and took them to a commercial truck for delivery to Nara. Now, as we know, these 15 boxes were not everything that Trump had stashed at Mar-a-Lago, and Nara knew that too, so it referred the matter to the DOJ. On May 11, 2022, the grand jury issued a subpoena to the office of Donald J. Trump requiring the production of all documents with classification markings in the possession, custody, or control of Trump or the office of Donald J. Trump. Now, 11 days later, Trump met with his lawyer, Evan Corcoran, and unnamed Trump attorney number two. At their meeting, Corcoran and attorney two made the legally wise suggestion that they fully comply with a subpoena to which Trump responded. I don't want anybody looking. I don't want anybody looking through my boxes. I really don't. I don't want you looking through my boxes. That's so awesome. Like, he's just, <laughs> I don't want anybody looking. Don't look at him. Don't look at my boxes. They should have made me do the fucking AI. Instead of having the AI do it, I would have legal, legal. Next time I will do it. Okay. I'll do it for you. Don't go with the AI. I'm here. I can do it. The AI makes it so much better. No, I think it's, be it's funnier if it's like someone voicing him. Don't look at my boxes. <laughs> well, what if we, what happens if we just don't respond at all or don't play ball with them? Wouldn't it be better if we just told them we don't have anything here? Well, look, isn't it better if there are no documents? Then Trump, like a wise old Buddhist monk, relayed to the lawyers a story with a very clear implication. Attorney, he was great. He did a great job. You know what he said? He said that it, that it was him, that he was the one who deleted all of her emails, the 30,000 emails, because they basically dealt with her scheduling and her going to the gym and her having beauty appointments. And he was great. And he, so she didn't get in any trouble because he said that he was the one who deleted them. Yeah, so literally misunderstanding what he thought happened in the Hillary Clinton case and then suggesting that one of his attorneys do what he think happened. Just incredible stuff. But apparently, Trump related the story more than once that day. But anyway, Trump agreed that Evan Corcoran would return to the Mar-a-Lago Club on June 2nd to search for any documents with classification markings to produce in response to the May 11th subpoena. However, between Trump's May 23rd meeting with Trump Attorney 1 and Trump Attorney 2 to discuss the May 11th subpoena, and June 2nd when Trump Attorney 1 returned to the Mar-a-Lago Club to review the boxes in the storage room, uh, Nauda removed at Trump's direction, a total of approximately 64 boxes from the storage room and brought them to the Trump residence. In sum, between May 23rd, 2022 and June 2nd, 2022, before Trump Attorney 1's review of Trump's boxes in the storage room, Nauda at Trump's direction moved- That's not a staff, that's not a staffer. That's his valet. Which is also so incredibly Trump. To just be like, all right, the fucking lawyers are cooked. They're, they're being lame. They're being nerds. I'm just going to go with my, I'm just going to go with my fucking valet. And then I'm going to not tell my lawyers. I'm going to withhold this information from them. 
moved approximately 64 boxes from the storage room to Trump's residence and brought to the storage room only approximately 30 boxes. Neither Trump nor Nauda informed Trump attorney number one of this information. So basically Trump- like, It's like a butler. It's like his personal butler. That's what it is. That's the, the valet. That's his job. Trump let Evan Corcoran believe that Corcoran had turned over everything to the FBI. Then secretly Trump and Nauda had hid away at least 24 extra boxes in another room when Corcoran sifted through the boxes in the storage room. Corcoran used the clear duct tape to seal the Red Weld folder with the documents with classification markings inside. Corcoran brought the Red Weld folder to Trump in the Mar-a-Lago dining room and confirmed that he had finished his search for classified documents. Trump asked, did you find anything? Is it bad? Good? Trump and Trump Attorney One then discussed what to do with the Red Weld folder containing documents with classification markings and whether Trump Attorney One should bring them to his hotel room and put them in a safe there. During that conversation, Trump made a plucking motion as memorialized by Trump Attorney One. He made a funny motion as though, well, okay, why don't you take them with you to your hotel room? And if there's anything really bad in there, like, you know, pluck it out. And that was the motion that he made. He didn't say that. So after this incredible exchange, Corcoran contacted the FBI and told them that they were ready to hand the documents over. The next day, Corcoran and Christina Bob met with the FBI, gave them the set of documents that they were aware of, as well as the Red World folder full of classified documents, and Christina Bob falsely certified that a diligent search had been conducted and that they returned any and all documents that are responsive to the subpoena. But the thing that really slaps you in the face is paragraph 72, because before the lawyers had made the search, Apparently, earlier that same day, Nauda and others loaded several of Trump's boxes along with other items on aircraft that flew Trump and his family north for the summer. But at any rate, the FBI realized that they were still missing a ton of documents. And so they took the extraordinary step of issuing a search warrant against the property and basically raiding Mar-a-Lago on August 8th, 2022, where they found 102 documents with classification markings in Trump's office and storage room. Now, as you can probably already tell, Trump is going to need a good lawyer, which he may not have right now because they keep resigning. But if you need a great lawyer, my firm, The Eagle Team, is now accepting new clients. If you've been in a car crash, suffered from police brutality or sexual harassment, or just about anything else, we can represent you or find the right attorney who can. So just click on the link that's down in the description for a free consultation with my team. Because you don't just need a legal team, you need The Eagle Team. The link is below. And the timeline here is damning. On May 11th, Trump's lawyers accepted service of the grand jury subpoena. Y'all throw him 10 tens for that and not when I run the top of the hour ad break. It's kind of fucked up. Because at the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. I even give you an out to no longer see those fucking ads. Okay? But, oh no, you give him a 10-10. Like, that's messed up. I'm wearing a suit too. Give me a 10-10. At the top of the hour, you still get a fucking three minute ad break now course you can subscribe five dollars or free with a twitch prime or you can get gifted a sub if you're lucky here's the three minute ad break now florida peacocks will abramson thank you for the five tier one gift subs allowing 10 people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour and for the missing documents on May 22nd, Nauda took one box from the storage room and moved it to the Trump residence. The following day, on May 23rd, Trump met with his lawyers to discuss the response to the subpoena. Uh, Corcoran and Trump Attorney 2 informed Trump that they should really have the chance to search the documents and make sure that they comply fully with the subpoena. Trump clearly hated that idea and expressed that he didn't want anyone looking through his documents. And eventually, he agreed that Corcoran... I do appreciate that... Uh, I, I do appreciate Mr. Eagle's uh, presence in the space, for the record. Like... Um, we probably don't agree on, um, you know, the minutia, but overall he's like a, a fairly, I mean, he's a massive fucking content creator in this space and it's like very obvious that he is center left. You know what I mean? I, I'm not expecting him to like shit on Nancy Pelosi or anything anytime soon or the democratic party, but it's still good that like someone who comes across as cut and dry Someone who comes across as like just delivering the news from like a, a center left perspective, having this level of prominence and this kind of like uh, positive, uh, uh, a positive welcoming approach. Like it's good. It's a good thing. He does shit on fake libs a bit. I mean, I, I'm just saying that it's good that there are people like this in the commentary space you mentioned police brutality as a reason to hire his firm so 100 center left 
That's what I mean. Uh, like, he's not. What is this? What did I get? What the fuck did it? What the fuck did you guys rate me? Six two three. I tried to literally steal legal eagles ratings. You fucking assholes. He's obviously lit, but he does a good job for objectivity. Yeah, he does. He really does. So you know, I I respect him. I I like. I like what he's doing. I think it's great. Corcoran would have to look through the boxes of documents, but he pushed that back to June second. But before that, on May 24th, Nada removed three boxes from the storage room. On May 30th, after speaking with Trump on the phone, Nada removed 50 boxes from the storage room. Uh, from a text conversation between Nada and presumably Melania Trump, we know that the boxes ended up in Trump's residence. On June 1st, the day before Corcoran's search, Nada moved another 11 boxes to the residence for a total of 64. And the following day, Nada moved only 30 boxes back from the storage room for Corcoran to actually look through. It appears that both Trump and Nada interacted with Corcoran the day of the search and neither told him that most of the boxes weren't in the storage room. Basically, they conspired to make sure that Corcoran and Christina Bob unwittingly lied to the FBI the next day and only turned over a portion of the documents. Now, we'll talk about the legal charges in a second, but in sum, the indictment hits every formal and informal defense that Trump has so far broached. He possessed national defense information, much of which was TSSCI. He didn't have permission to possess the documents. He did not secure the documents. He certainly didn't declassify them. He I work at a prestigious law firm, and today I heard the libertarian lawyer saying Trump is screwed. Anyone with any knowledge thinks so? Yeah, that's why you're hearing from even the Fox uh, News mouthpieces. Uh, when, when the Fox News mouthpieces are talking about this issue, they take a very different approach than the one with Alvin Bragg. Because the Alvin Bragg Manhattan DA case is not necessarily flimsy, but it's certainly like a bit of a stretch. It's not as open and shut. And if it's left up to interpretation, it could go either way, okay? Whereas this one is so clear cut. The only way Trump gets out of this is if there's like a tremendous amount of bias at play. And even then, I don't know how he does that. Like 36 out of the 37 charges are like pretty basic shit. You know what I mean? It's pretty basic stuff. It's like, it's not like, we don't know if Donald Trump actually colluded to obstruct justice. Like, we know. We literally fucking know that he did do that. You know? Yeah, the slam dunk, absolutely. Right? So, that's the reason why you see a lot of the Fox News uh, mouthpieces. Even Turley, Jonathan Turley, who is a law professor at the end of the day there. And like one of the main legal broadcasters, he's like the legal eagle for Fox news has been very deliberately saying, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to mix my words on this. Trump's chances do not look great, but also butter emails. That's why you're not hearing people attack the actual 36 out of the 37 charges. They're only hyper-focusing on the espionage one. And also on top of that, most of the time they're just saying, oh, this timing is suspicious. It's probably because of Hunter Biden. Or what about Hillary Clinton's emails? What I have been confused by is, and like I said yesterday, I, this was a shower thought for me because I often think about Trump in the shower. Um was why the Trump campaign or the, the like Trump loyalists haven't just falsely claimed that the FBI is like lying to the public and, uh, and, and his lawyers were compromised and his valet was compromised. Not that it's true. It, of course, isn't true. But like his fucking fan base doesn't care anyway. So you might as well just say it. Yeah, just say the FBI lied. How long until we get that these are AI generated messages? No, that's too complicated. That's too complicated. That's like, oh, AI generated? No, fuck that. Just say they lied. He is. Trump now claims classified documents were planted in a wild arraignment morning rant. Wait, what do you mean planted? He is voluntarily.
Former President Donald Trump has now claimed the classified documents at Mar-a-Lago were planted in the boxes after they were obtained by the Department of Justice. Yeah, that doesn't change the, the conversation, though. That doesn't change the, the, the evidence that the state has. This would at least directly target the evidence that the state has. And by that, I mean, you know, by that, I mean evidence. I don't believe the state either. That's right. I'm a Trump loyalist. And I believe the state planted that evidence and also lied about the conversations that Trump had with his valet and his lawyers. The lawyers are lying, folks. Do you call Jack Smith a thug? No, Jack Smith is white, brother. So, of course, he did not call the white special prosecutor a thug. No, only black DAs get called a thug. Did he? I don't think he called Jack Smith a thug. No, he did call him a thug. It was crazy. Oh, shit. Okay. Respect. See? He sees no color. Bro, you are too short. I am. I'm actually 5'4". Hours before he's reigned, Trump is now at the phase where he's calling special counsel Jack Smith a thug on a social platform and accusing Smith of planting evidence. Let's go, dude. I'm like 5'3", actually, on a good day. This angle makes you smaller. Good. I have no problem lying about my height and making myself appear shorter. That only makes it worse for all of you. Never forget that. You want me to lie and say I'm actually taller than I am, not that I'm shorter than I actually am. Because ultimately, if I'm fucking 5'4", then what are you? <laughs> I have no issues. That's a threat. Okay? When I say I'm actually... When I say I'm actually six foot and I lied about my height, that automatically makes you like all that shorter than you actually are. He knew he had not declassified those documents that he possessed. He showed them to others. He knew he shouldn't show them to others. He didn't cooperate and then he lied that he had cooperated. He lied to his attorneys. He deliberately hid the docs from his attorneys so they couldn't comply. He repeatedly hid the docs from the FBI and NARA and he conspired with others to complete everything that we've talked about. And as the allegedly recorded interactions show, he did everything for the Trumpiest reason of all. He kept the documents and he showed them to others for clout. So by now you're probably getting the sense that Trump is pretty screwed. But yes. how screwed is he? It's the best. Well, the indictment the contains 38 different charges. It doesn't charges. get any better and than that, dude. It doesn't get any better than that, dude. I fucking love that. Yeah, for clout. Exactly. No, literally. Straight up. All the evidence we have so far, none of which actually like openly states that he had any interest in like doing espionage or whatever, okay? Let's be fucking real. The only evidence we have and maybe there is more, okay? I'm not saying there isn't. I'm not saying that, like, I'm ruling out the espionage charge or whatever. But Donald Trump, much like many of the other leakers of our time, like uh, Jack uh, Tahera or whatever, was just simply doing it for his Discord kittens, okay? He was just doing it at a different level than, than the other guy from the naval base in Massachusetts, okay? He was just... Literally doing it for clout. He was like, I, I got these documents you don't want to see. Stay behind. And uh, the first is 31 counts of violating the Espionage Act, one for each of the documents containing national defense information. The indictment includes a list of each of those documents, which you can find beginning on page 28. And the list includes documents marked top secret, special handling, relevant to USA, uh, F-V-E-Y for the Five Eyes Intelligence, uh, top secret, and S-I. And in the descriptions of these documents, there are some truly terrifying commentary on the nature of these documents. Uh, for example, document nine concerns military attacks by a foreign country. Document 12 pertains to the projected regional military capabilities of a foreign country and the United States. Document 19 involves the nuclear capabilities of the United States. And all these documents were, according to the indictment, shuffled around various locations in Mar-a-Lago, squirreled away in closets and bathrooms and stored next to a toilet, spilled on a floor, and most of the time easy for anyone who worked at Mar-a-Lago to access.
And worst, these may not even be the most sensitive documents recovered by the federal government. To bring an Espionage Act case, prosecutors have to cite documents that can be partially revealed during the trial. That's because the defendant has a right to review the evidence that is being used against them. So the DOJ appears to have recovered at least 13 top secret documents uh, that weren't charged in the indictment. For each document listed in the indictment, prosecutors would have to have received approval to use it in the criminal case from the agency which owned that information. And some of the 13 documents might have been considered Considered too sensitive to be exposed during the criminal case. And the indictment says that Trump kept classified documents created by or in some way involving most of America's intelligence agencies, including the Central Intelligence Agency, the Department of Defense, the National Security Agency, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, the National Reconnaissance Office, the Department of Energy, the Department of State's Bureau of Intelligence and Research, and others. Now, the name Espionage Act evokes foreign spies, and that has, of course, triggered Trump and his supporters who claim this act can apply to a former president. But the Espionage Act applies to any anyone who discloses national defense information to a foreign government. But it also applies to anyone who retains national security information or discloses it to any unauthorized person. And that doesn't necessarily need to even be classified information. So accordingly, Trump was indicted under Section 793E of the Act, which makes it a criminal offense for any unauthorized person to willfully retain national defense information and fail to deliver it to an officer or employee of the United States who is entitled to receive it. A 793E offense is a felony punishable by imprisonment of up to 10 years in prison. And unlike a lot of the things that we talk about on this channel where the maximum is nowhere near what the actual sentence someone would actually get, this is something where 10 years might actually be reasonable. And the really scary thing for Trump is that sometimes these kind of offenses can get consecutive sentences rather than concurrent, which means that they stack on top of each other and have to be served one after the other instead of serving all of the sentences at the same time. That can add up really easily. That's not to say he's guaranteed consecutive sentences. There's a whole thing in the sentencing guidelines that I'm not gonna go into right now, but it is a possibility. Uh, now on top of that, count 32 is- Oh my God, you left a video playing and walked away. Your view count just soared. What do you mean? Like, I, I don't- Did it? I don't think so. I saw you at work today. The time I've left my house is at urgent care. I go to urgent care, so I doubt it. Is for conspiracy to obstruct justice. Hassan, please help. I need to know what video we're watching so I can educate my idiot Trump supporting bros. This is Trump's bombshell federal document indictment from the wonderful and uh, sexy legal eagle which you should subscribe to um that i'm ripping off his style a little bit today Subsection K of section 1512 prohibits a conspiracy stating whoever conspires to commit any offense under the section shall be subject to the same penalties as those prescribed for the offense, the commission of which was the object of the conspiracy. And here, Trump's co-conspirator uh, was allegedly Walt Nauda. Uh, the indictment says that the two men pressured other witnesses to withhold testimony or withhold I would a record love to have document legal, legal or legal object pod. from an official proceeding in violation of section 1512B2A and to corruptly conceal a record in violation of section 1512C1. Now, count 33 of the indictment Indictment charges Trump and Nauda for misleading Trump's lawyers and others in order to withhold documents from an official proceeding. Now, the purpose of this tampering was allegedly so, quote, uh, Trump could keep the documents that he had taken with him when he left the White House and to hide and conceal them from the grand jury. Count 34 is for corruptly concealing a document or record in violation of 1512C1 and 2. And that section applies to whoever corruptly alters, destroys, mutilates, or conceals a record, document, or other object, or attempts to do so with the intent to impair the object's integrity or availability to use in an proceeding. Now here, Nauda and Trump were hit with this charge for hiding and concealing boxes of classified documents from Corcoran so that he would not be able to return them from the government. Then the 35th charge uh, says that the defendants were concealing a document in a federal investigation in violation of 18 U.S.C. 1519, which outlines the federal crime of obstruction of justice uh, for destroying, altering, or falsifying records. And the indictment lays out all the ways that Trump and Nauda obstructed the investigation. Trump suggested that his lawyer falsely represent that Trump did not have the documents responsive to the subpoena. And as we discussed in my video, on the attorney-client privilege, prosecutors were able to use the crime fraud exception to get access to the notes taken by Evan Corcoran, one of Trump's lawyers, and the man who is throughout this indictment labeled as lawyer number one. Uh, Corcoran's notes helped the government lay the foundation for the obstruction charge. And the notes were taken contemporaneously with events that they unfolded. The notes say that Trump said, quote, I don't want anyone looking through my boxes. I really don't. I 
don't want you looking through my boxes. Which is of course incredibly ironic and harkens back to my favorite part of the Mueller report, uh, where Trump was talking about how much he loved his old lawyer, Roy Cohn, who was just a real piece of work, uh, and hated the fact that his lawyers were taking notes. The president then asked, what are these notes? Why do you take notes? Lawyers don't take notes. I never had a lawyer who took notes. McGahn responded that he keeps notes because he is a quote, real lawyer and explained that notes create a record and are not a bad thing. The president said, I've had a lot of great lawyers like Roy Cohn. Isn't that just darling? Seems like Donald Trump was right. Seems like there was a very specific reason as to why my man did not want Notes to be taken at his fucking, at his fucking meetings, okay? Turns out he was right. Vindicated. He did not take notes. Yeah, so here's the thing. Real lawyers take notes, both for the client's protection and for the lawyer's protection. But uh, I digress. Anyway, on May 23rd, 2022, Corcoran and a person described as lawyer number two told Trump they needed to search for documents responsive to the subpoena. Corcoran then told Trump that he would be back on June 2nd. But on June 1st, Trump spoke with Corcoran to confirm that he was coming to Mar-a-Lago on June 2nd. And Trump directed Nauda to move 64 boxes out of the storage room and hide them from the lawyers. Now to move the boxes from the storage room and put them in Trump's residence. On June 2nd, the lawyers searched the residence and they found 38 classified documents and sealed them in a folder. But according to Corcoran's notes, Trump told him, wouldn't it be better if we just told them we don't have anything here? He then said, well, look, isn't it better if there are no documents? Just classic stuff there. And then of course there was the classic plucking a uh, gesture that he made about uh, about the documents. Now the government says this obstructive conduct did serious harm because it meant the US didn't get the documents back until at least August of 2022. And it's worth noting, the Justice Department closed the Mike Pence case without charging him for obstruction and this indictment- How did the notice leak out? Not supposed to be kept private. Brother, I just mentioned it. Attorney client privilege works in pretty much every single instance with one notable exception. Your attorney cannot aid and abet in the crime that you're currently uh, under investigation for. So if it's, you know, that there's one exception and he absolutely violated that exception. Indictment shows why. Pence cooperated with the government. Whereas Trump instructed his aides and lawyers to conceal records from the government after Trump was on notice that the government wanted them back. He pretended to be cooperating fully while trying to keep the documents. And he caused his lawyers to file a certification with the FBI falsely stating that he did a full search and returned all responsive material. So it's not surprising that Nauda was charged as his co-conspirator in most of this conduct. And Trump was also charged with a violation of 18 U.S.C. 1001. Section 1001 is the classic don't lie to the government provision. It makes it a crime for any person to make a false statement or or in writing to federal investigators. It states that whoever in any matter within the jurisdiction of the executive, legislative, or judicial branch of the government of the United States knowingly and willfully falsifies, conceals, or covers up by any trick scheme or device a material fact, makes any materially false, fictitious, or fraudulent statement or representation, has committed a felony punishable by a fine imprisonment by no more than five years or both. Now the government accuses both Trump and Nauda of a scheme to conceal. The government charged Trump with a subsection A2 of section 1001 by making representations that are materially false, fictitious, or fraudulent. And the indictment says that he caused his attorney number three, who we think is Christina Bob, to submit a sworn certification to the FBI that the diligent search was conducted and that all responsive documents were produced with the certification. In reality, which is like, what, number three on like multiple different life rafts that were given to Donald Trump, which he just slapped away or, or exploded with a fucking needle. Like, they tried so fucking hard to make this right. They were like, dude, please, please. Like, we don't want a fucking massive case on our hands. Which is why it's funny when Donald Trump is like, oh, they, they're coming after me because they, like, they're biased. And it's like, no, man. They did everything they could to not get to this position. Nauda is his personal butler. Reality though, Trump had sabotaged the attorney's efforts to do the search by making sure that Nauda removed boxes before the attorneys even did their search and that the lawyer wasn't aware that Nauda was concealing documents. Uh, of course, it's their own problem that the lawyer did not make sure that a diligent search had been conducted. 
Uh, but the indictment says that after the June certification, over 100 documents with classification markings were recovered when the FBI raided Mar-a-Lago. Nauta was also accused of lying to the FBI, violating the same section of the law. And Count 38 says that he voluntarily talked with the FBI on May 26, 2022, Ooh. while represented by counsel. And during the interview, he made the following false statements in violation of 1001. He said he was unaware of Trump bringing any boxes into his Mar-a-Lago suite, that he had no information at all about where the boxes were located, how they were kept, or who had access to them. He had never seen the boxes until the day they arrived from Pine Hall. And the indictment says that Nauta knew exactly where the boxes came from since he himself had moved the boxes from storage uh, and since now had reviewed the box it's funny because like he has to hire people who are just as stupid as he is because otherwise like smarter people are going to be self-interested smarter people are going to want to protect themselves smarter people are going to say yeah don't do that fucking idiot don't do that at all that's like super illegal which is why when he hires people to do the crimes, yeah, smarter people take notes, okay? And that's a big deal for him. That's a big problem for him. Nauda is not a smart person. That's why he entrusted him with this extraction and hiding of evidence. Like hiding uh, the documents that the government was asking him to return. And there you go. <laughs> A perfect demonstration of someone's brain processing capabilities in broad fucking daylight. You're caught dead to fucking rights and you just lie. I'm shocked that he didn't like try to strike a plea deal or something. And instead went straight for the, nah, that didn't happen. I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. Defense boxes in and around Mar-a-Lago, even taking a photo of their spilled contents and sending it via text message. The indictment contains numerous text messages from Nauta about fetch- For the record, this is precisely the reason why I'm saying, like, uh, you know, Donald Trump should just say, like, these guys are actually turned by the federal agents. Like, none of these things actually happen. The federal agents actually planted the documents, and that Nauta and his lawyers, like, these new lawyers, they're not like Roy Cohn! New lawyers, folks! The feds, the feds turned them around, folks. These text messages, they're not real. They're not real text messages. They're fake. That's what I would do if I was Trump. If I was in Trump's team, I would just fucking willingly lie. Uh, like, not personally, but like have my, my uh, goons lie on my behalf. And try to call into question the, the legitimacy of like the state's uh, evidence and the witnesses. It's not going to work for the court case anyway, but like you're trying to win the public's, uh, the court of public opinion here. Catching the documents for Trump and on January 22nd, uh, 2022, now detected a Mar-a-Lago employee about getting new covers for the boxes because Trump thought the existing ones were too marked up. And again, this was all after Trump was on notice that the government requested the return of the classified documents, believing that they were in an unsecured location. And again, here is Nauta, who doesn't have a security clearance, moving boxes around at will and then lying to the FBI about it. So basically, if the facts are as they are alleged, the Justice Department had no choice but to indict Nauta as well. Now, one of the more interesting things here is that Trump wasn't charged for retaining material that was returned to the government prior to the 2022 subpoena. So this is a pretty good indication that if Trump had cooperated, like others who had documents accidentally in their possession, like Biden and Pence, and shipped everything back, he wouldn't be staring down the barrel of 37 counts of this indictment. Of course, storing hundreds of top secret documents in an unsealed bathroom can lead to all kinds of information being leaked. But for most of us, a lot of our personal information has already been gathered online. But you can get your online personal data taken down with today's sponsor in Wait, that audio of Trump? 